Welcome to the Water Trainer Kaz channel, and today we're doing a theory video on uh, the possibility of the nerf gear from the anime Sword Art Online. So my question is, uh, is a full dive environment possible? Currently, my answer is going to have to say not yet. However, uh, I do think we can enter a very rudimentary version um, of a near full dive uh, state. So before I get into that, I'm going to actually explain what full dive is. In the case that you somehow clicked on this video not knowing what virtual reality, you know, VR, uh, not knowing what that is, um, virtual reality itself is, in essence, a way to simulate uh, an entirely new world, uh, new scenarios, uh, you know, a reality that's virtual, that's not actually real, a virtual reality. Uh, <clears throat> so a full dive virtual reality, full dive environment, is where the virtual reality, the, the VR, is completely immersive. What There's nothing that will break your immersion while you're in the full dive environment. So with current uh, VR technology, we have the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive as your big brand virtual reality systems. They are obviously quite expensive right now, uh, however they do exist. They are not full dive technology, however. For the most part, you're dealing with hardware. Uh, you're dealing with a system, you're dealing with controllers, uh, possibly foot sensors and a, a full bodysuit sensor if you go that far. Those are great in terms of, of getting to that immersive state, but the biggest issue is the fact that you're still wearing something, or you're still using controllers and you can't actually feel things like the pushback of a gun, or the, the your sword blade going through the air the wind across your body as you're flying through the air. That sort of thing. <clears throat> and that's what would be possible in a full dive environment. So, is a full dive environment currently possible? Uh, with the technology that we have, not yet. However, we can enter a very rudimentary, rudimentary state of the near immersion using multiple different devices. So, what, one of the devices, obviously uh, after you've set up your computer to be able to run a VR device and the VR device itself, would be uh, called a neural impulse actuator, where it measures your brain waves and it measures different, specifically different parts of your brain so that you can map it to control different parts of your computer, such as the movement of your mouse or the left or right click, that sort of thing. Uh, if you get yourself a neural impulse actuator, I'm just going to call it NIA or NIA for short, I'm going to say NIA for the majority of the video. With that, you can combine that with your Oculus Rift or your HTC Vive so that you have the visual immersion along with using your brain and using your mind to map out and control what you're doing for the most part. Because and, uh, the NIAs are very rudimentary still and can only sense certain things, such as the level of concentration you're putting into it, uh, or you know if, you're, if you look left or right, those sorts of things uh, it would make it very rudimentary. You still have to figure out a way to move around in the world uh, other than just look around and you have to figure out ways to attack, whatever. You would have to map it out yourself. It would have to be calibrated to your brain and everything. But, so, with that being said, I will say that a full dive environment would be possible in the future. Uh, and it would be far in the future, but it is in the future nonetheless. And by far, I mean, you know, within the next 15 to 20 years, uh, which is quite a while in te technology's side, but when, when it comes to uh, experiments with uh, the human mind, or even people in general, uh, experiments like that take a long, long time. The first step to even get these technologies going would be for VR to completely and utterly just explode, become the most one of the most mainstream things uh, possible. Uh, and it can't just be a gimmick either. Uh, currently, if you want to get your hands on a VR device, you only really have two options other than those you know twenty dollar uh, phone holder case things uh, that use your phone as the VR device. Uh, so on the console side of things, you, you need to go out and you need to buy a PS4. Uh, PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation uh, VR headset. So together, you're looking at you know $700 almost at least. You know, somewhere in around $700 anyway. Uh, and if you want to game on your computer using the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, not only do you need to go and buy the Oculus Rift, which is currently at 500 and 
sixty dollars, I think, uh, and the HTC or the HTC Vive, which is twelve hundred dollars. But you also need to make sure that your computer can run it. So you need a minimum of the GTX 970 for that generation of video cards, or the GTX 1060 for that generation uh, and beyond. Uh, and you also need an Intel i5-4590 uh, CPU, uh, or if you play for the red team, the AMD or Radeon counterparts of uh, those components. Those are the minimum that you need, and so you're not even really future-proofing yourself uh, in terms of your computer uh, at that point. Now if you're not into the computer side of things the way I am anyway, you're probably going to be going ahead and just trying to get a console to uh, if you want that near immersion state anyway. Uh, in which case you can't go out and get, get yourself in the NIA because it won't work with your console. Um, so we are focusing more on the computer side of things, but it's not you don't need to worry too much about the computer right now in terms of the theory video anyway. So that all that being said though, you could be spending already $500 or more just to upgrade your computer or to buy a new computer to run a VR device of your choosing. Once virtual reality really explodes and the prices come way down, at least in one of the areas, whether it's console or PC, the virtual reality community development teams, they can really delve deep into the development of AAA games for virtual reality. And not just a port to, but specifically designed to work in the virtual reality environments. And the reason that you're not going to find those right now, uh, for the most part anyway, is that no one is going to produce a game that has a million dollar budget if there's no one to buy the game. So, you know, with all this tech that we do have, eventually virtual reality will get to a point where it's not much further it can go. You know, clomping around in your living room wearing a sensor suit? It's probably not going to be the most elegant thing for your family and friends to watch, and you could easily walk into a wall or the coffee table, uh, you know, a desk, whatever is in your living room, and break the immersion. That's not really what uh, what's being marketed with these VR devices. Uh, we want a full immersion system. So the solution that I can currently see would be for uh, the developers to incorporate a NIA into their virtual reality headsets to allow for basic control over games to be detecting the electrical signals that your brain gives off and converting them to in-game commands for your character. Obviously, in the beginning, it would probably just be for basic movement of your character on a map, so you don't actually have to move from your seat. Uh, but eventually with research, development, and a lot of testing, as I had said earlier, testing on the humans, uh, human mind and humans in general, is, takes a long time, um, but it could eventually control a lot more of the game, uh, even including the swinging of your arm, the way that you swing your arm, the speed and the power of the swing, you know, that sort of thing, and other various aspects of your body's movement as well, so you don't have to move at all in the uh, in real life to move your character in the game. This is obviously going to take quite a while before that happens. As I said, first we have to have the boom, the big explosion of virtual reality where everything is a lot more affordable for the consumer. However, once that does happen, it won't be too long before these sorts of developments get made because with technology, with the way it advances, once it gets to a certain point where it can't go any further, people find a way to bring it further. And with VR, the, the main focus being the immersion into the game, the only way to obtain more immersion would be to stop the use of a suit or of a keyboard and mouse or a controller. So their next step would be to incorporate the NIA to scan the brainwaves to learn about the brain waves. In the medical field, the brain is being researched all the time, and we have plenty of research on the brain, and we haven't come too far yet, but uh, when general interest for something rises, the more people go, go into that field uh, because the interest is there. The interest for computers uh, boomed uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and look how far computers have come since the 90s. Computers we barely had internet in the 90s, and now you're almost foreign if you don't have internet. The final step to complete full immersion, though, is to send feelings to your brain. We can pick up on the brain signals and whatever. That's not 
actually going to be the hard part, uh, from what I can tell. The hard part will be sending signals to the brain, to essentially trick your brain into actually feeling certain sensations that the game would want you to feel. So for example, if it's a nice cool autumn day, you would be able to feel the wind. Or you know, if you're in a northern icy cave, you would be able to feel the cold. Uh, as I said, this would be harder to develop for, but there are theoretical ways to go about this. Uh, as we learn more about the brain, we can theoretically stimulate certain parts, uh, the parts that would control uh, and process the, uh, these feelings that we would get. Uh, and whether that's with a frequency that's inaudible to the human ear, but it would still obviously go to our minds, or with colors, uh, because we do know that colors uh, do influence emotion, or, or whatever technology it is that we have available to us at that time, there would still be ways to go about it at least theoretically. My conclusion, as I said, uh, to is a full dive environment possible at all? Yes, it most certainly is possible. However, uh, how long it will take to reach a full dive is completely unknown. As far as my boom for the uh, VR, the, the big explosion of uh, virtual reality, I only think it's a year or two away, uh, at least as of time of recording. Uh, the boom of virtual reality is going to be a big one. It's probably going to be one of the biggest booms of technology since the internet. What are your thoughts on the matter? Do my points make sense to you? Do you feel I missed anything? Let me know in the comments below. So uh, this has been Water Trainer Gaz, and I'm signing out. See you guys later.